In order to achieve a successful calibration with the Clean Sweep DSP unit, we have to input full range. And when we're dealing with a situation where the input signal is crossed over, as it is in these cases, we have to find where that other information is in the factory system and add it to this signal before putting it into the clean sweep. Now in this particular case, this uh, Lincoln radio, as with most Ford premium systems, has a dedicated subwoofer output coming out of it. We need to take that subwoofer signal and actually add it to this front signal and also add it to the rear signal so that we have full range and the clean sweep can do its job and flatten that response. There are several ways to do summing of signals. Um, probably the, the crudest way to do it is with line output converters, which we commonly refer to as LOCs. LOCs are passive devices that use little transformers, and they're inherently lossy by design, and they degrade frequency response further. And they have a very weak ability to level match signals that are of a different level. Um, they can be used in a pinch in many situations, but it's really not the cleanest approach. Another way to do it is with an active preamp that has the ability to sum its outputs because the inputs and outputs are isolated. Um, those products can work very well. JL Audio sells a product called the Clean Sweep CLSSI, which is dedicated and designed purely as a signal summing interface. And because it's so targeted at what it does, it has a few features in it that make it really well suited for this application and make it really easy to set up for the installer in a minimum amount of time. And uh, that's really critical, especially on that Saturday afternoon where we're trying to get out of there and, and we need to get this car done. Okay, we'll pull our CLSSI up front here. And um, we're going to plug the sub signal coming out of the radio into the subwoofer input, the rear signal into the rear input, rear high pass input, and the front signal into the front high pass input. We're going to put our calibration CD into the OEM head unit. We're going to turn the volume of the OEM head unit to approximately three-quarter volume, just as if we were calibrating the clean sweep from scratch. And then we're going to need to set the input levels on each of these bands so that we have a good, even summing result. And this is how this is done without the need for any external tools. This is the real killer feature of this product is its ability to tell you the relative level of signals. Now I'm, I've turned all these potentiometers all the way down. I've got my three inputs plugged in. I've set the range switches on speaker level. There's a range switch on each input that's either speaker or line level. We'll start with the speaker level position on each one. And now what we're going to do is use a flat blade screwdriver to trim each one of these potentiometers until we get a green light. If we go too far, it'll show us a red light, so we just back it off a little bit. And we have green there. Back that off of here, get back to green. And then the sub input. Okay, Houston, we have a problem. I turned it all the way up, and it's still telling me it's too low. The unit's essentially telling you at that point that isn't a speaker level signal, and you need to go over here and flip this switch over to line level. Okay, so even without really knowing that that was a line level input or line level output out of the radio, uh, the unit will tell you. Okay, now we've got a red light. That's too high. So we'll trim that back down. Hopefully get green happening here. Beautiful. Now we have three green lights, and three green lights is always a good thing. From that point, you simply take your precision clean sweep calibration tool and recalibrate the DSP unit. And hopefully instead of those red lights and red and green alternating lights, we'll get four nice green lights when we're done with that process. And that means we've achieved a good correction result that we can use to build our aftermarket system with. Isn't it great when a plan comes together? Four green lights means we've achieved successful calibration. We did all of this really without even turning on the RTA. The SSI was able to tell us the relative levels of the signals we were summing, and then this unit is telling you that it has achieved a successful calibration. But I always like to check things to make sure that everything is right. So we'll turn the RTA back on to see what we've actually achieved. And as you can see, we have a very nice 
flat frequency response to work with, and we're monitoring the front channel at the moment. I'll defeat the clean sweep momentarily to show you what it started with, which is essentially the result of the summed signal between the sub and the front channel through the SSI. Now we'll go and look at the rear channel results, and we can see that we've, we've achieved a substantially flat result on the rear channels as well. And I'll show you what we started with there. And that was, uh, remember that that had a very high high pass frequency. It was actually staggered, but the clean sweep was actually able to fill in that range and get it corrected relatively flat. So we started with a front high pass that was equalized, a rear high pass that was equalized, a sub signal that was equalized. We summed them together through the SSI applied them into the DSP unit and were able to get very usable flat signals to use for our aftermarket system. And it was all done very quickly and very simply. The whole process of calibrating the SSI and calibrating the DSP should take no more than a couple of minutes once you've got all the connections made. When you're playing a music CD, it's completely normal for these lights to dance around and go red or yellow or green and dance around in between. That's because the level of the music is constantly changing. The only time that the colors have any meaning is when you're calibrating the unit with the clean sweep calibration tone. Okay, so if you see red lights flashing, it doesn't mean anything's clipping, nothing bad is happening. That is completely normal operation of the unit once it's done.